Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're screwed, man. Well, Capitol Police Chief Bo Lucky says they're making headway on this investigation. Now, he, along with other people in the Bondren area, are disturbed with this video. Anyone that spends time here in this Bondren, downtown Bondren area, says that Swallowphonic is a staple in the community. You're taken away from hardworking people. Here you have a business owner who is is trying to survive, trying to make trying to make a living. Clothes off the rack, boxes of shoes, and even a cash register, all stolen from Swellophonic in a matter of minutes. It's just one of the most grotesque things you can do as a as a as a person is just take something that somebody's worked so hard for. The retail store shared this shocking surveillance video with us. The break-in happened early Tuesday around 2.45 a.m. You can see. Yeah, but if you yeah. know you live around Suns in Jackson, that glass window, need you need one of those things you pull down in the front of the store, those gates. You can't, like, like you can't. This is too easy. This is disrespectful. This is disrespectful to have this just a door lock with a lock on it and a glass window. Because they would have broke this glass if they couldn't get to this door. Still demoralizing. Uh uh, kindergarten could have broken there. Yeah, it's, this is disrespectful. Like you, you live around. You live in Jaff. You have a business in Jaffrica. They call the place Jaffrica. You gotta. Uh, these people. If if they had fucking busted a hole through the fucking wall with a goddamn stick of dynamite, fine. But you just fucking get a fucking bolt cutter and or some or pick the lock in the front or throw a brick through the window and you're in there. If it's if it is if it is indeed Jaffrica, does that mean it would take colonizers to civilize it? No, I think I think that colonizers have not civilized Africa. There's no hope. Afri have you been to Africa lately? No, the the, the problem with the with colonizers is they left too early. But they still would have never. They would have just been treading water. They would have never. The people would have never been able to take the baton. Yeah, it you, you really been... should do a show like on South Africa one day, like where they were and where they are right now. Yeah, because it but... worked. No, it didn't work. It was a glider nation. South Africa yeah, it, glider it nation. failed. It completely yeah. failed. Passing the baton and the baton just flew into the ether. No, it no was, but I mean, it was working slowly. under the, the colonization yeah, system. Yeah, but I'm saying as soon as any semblance of power slips, it's gone. Well, how, well yeah. how long? Well, how long do you think it would take for you know for it to for it to get to the point where they could just pass it off? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it would take a, it would take a thousands long of years. Yeah, never. yeah, yeah okay, I think okay. I think okay. I mean, I, I, I mean, I understand that. I'm just saying it, it can be done, but it's it's a it's a long long term plan. How can it thousands be done of years on a what if? Years. Hold on, tell me. You're telling me thousands of years. Whoever colonizes the country, that kingdom is no kingdoms last thousands of years. So you would need a kingdom that lasted thousands of years to colonize. Yeah, Africa. that's what I'm saying. It's all on a, a fairy tale. What if? Yeah. The retail store shared this shocking surveillance video with us. The break-in happened early Tuesday around 2.45 a.m. You can see three thieves going in and out of the doors with what Swellophonic says was $8,700 worth of merchandise. So I know most of the owners. I know Shaney. Um, and my heart just goes out to him because I know how he hard the work he And I know that the things that he gets into the store are unique. And uh, it's just disappointing. Tonight, police in the store are looking for this SUV, which was caught on surveillance video by another. Which was stolen and probably ditched in a fucking parking lot somewhere and fucking set on fire. in the store are looking for this SUV, which was caught on surveillance video by another nearby store. And I know people are having a hard time in life, but there's always another alternative. <laughs> like no. what? Food it, stamps. It, I was just saying. It, it just took me a <laughs> second to realize that that was his voice. Yeah, they... You're not fully clean unless you're zestfully clean. <laughs> He's very zesty. <laughs> and make me mad because I know he could be fine, but he just, <laughs> he just destroyed. Hey, I don't you, know. you don't want to get that made. All right. Yeah, if you had yeah, a between, between him and, and the other dude earlier.
You picking this one? I'm picking the other dude. The other dude. Yeah, I'm picking. I'm picking pick Porky Pig over here. Yes. <laughs> picking Bubba. Then to, yeah. to break into someone's business and, and cause them harm in that way. Hours after the crime, Capitol Police Chief Bo Lucky attended a community safety meeting in Fondren. We asked. Look at the community. Why safety. is there were no black people here? This city is 84% sun. Look at the community safety meeting. It's never <laughs> any sun people at these meetings. Because it takes, well, I mean, forward, it takes forward thinking to have community safety. Well, they were yelling at the, um, in, in New Orleans, they were yelling at the That was about to kill them. I wouldn't want them there either. That was a tantrum. <laughs> this is, that's yeah, that's this teething. Is... <laughs> that's also teething pains. <laughs> These, yeah, like it's literally not one black person here in an eighty-four percent. And you know what this tells me? This tells me that the sons are just they're they're, they're resigned to it, and the gliders are like it's starting to spill into their areas. They done brought the nun out. Yeah, it's spilling into the glider areas, and the gliders are like, oh. It was cool when it was just in the sun areas, but now it's in our areas. Uh, no, we're not having this shit. You got to do something about this. And I don't blame them. Being in Fondren, we asked what he's doing in the department to prevent Fondren businesses from being targeted in the future. He says they're working on being more visible in the Capitol Complex Improvement District. No officer can be everywhere 24 hours a day. Nice but all officer. we do is just make sure that we're in the area as much as possible, being seen. Now, in that same community meeting, Chief Lucky talked about some of the improvements and some of the challenges. He says that he has now brought on 117 officers for the job when he originally started with 64. Oh, wow. And now they have 76 patrol cars. When he started, it was 17. Now, one of the oh, challenges. Wow. That's good. good. Yeah. That's, that's good. real good. You, that's what you need. Like, you need you need boots on the ground chasing these seven around, man. Oh, says is getting communication all everyone on the same page in terms of communication between the Hines County Sheriff's Office and the Jackson Police Department. Department. He says he's hoping to change that. Tonight we're live in downtown Fondra and Michaela Franklin, 16 WAP. Salute to them, man. Notice it takes a glider to organize that. Like I say, yeah. colonizers. <laughs> yeah, man. Salute to him, man. Salute to him for, 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 for doing that, man. <laughs> um, yeah, this this place is a um this place is a fucking um strange, strange place. All right, we got a former football player, NFL player arrested. Another one. Bond centered $100,000 for Terrell Poe and Gavin Bates, both men accused of forcing a man to go inside of a bank and withdraw money for a medical marijuana growing operation. They are charged with kidnapping and kidnapping conspiracy. But others claim there's another side to that story. Former Ole Miss and NFL defensive lineman Jarrell Poe and Gavin Bates said nothing as they entered the Ridgeland Courthouse to face charges of kidnapping a man who was allegedly leading a medical marijuana growing operation. Which one you think is the former NFL player? <laughs> um, the big black man. Yeah. Well, you, don't like Shaggy, you don't think Shaggy played in the league? Man? He probably did until he got on the the victim had been uh, taken against his will out of Laurel, Mississippi, and brought up here overnight. They stayed in uh, Pearl and then uh, came to the Chase Bank. And the reason they end up in Riesland is because there's just a Chase Bank here. Poe is a defensive lineman standout at Ole Miss, who later went on to play for the Kansas City Chiefs at Houston, Texas. According to police, Poe and Bates brought the victim to the Chase Bank in Ridgeland Richland, hoping to recoup some $300,000 they and others invested in a medical marijuana growing operation but saw very little return on their investments the whole time it, it, it's just been shady uh, did you help you that though? no Keith Stovall says he worked with Poe and Bates on the marijuana project that never grew into anything he says the alleged victim Bryce Mathis was supposedly bringing Poe and Bates to the bank to return their investment money of three hundred thousand dollars that's how they ended up over here to the Chase Bank because Bryce was supposed to give them the money back and it turns out to where he went in the bank and said, because he couldn't produce the money, that the kid, that uh, Jarrell was kidnapping. I, 
he probably is something to do with self-help, but you can't break the law and engage in kidnapping to collect on a debt. But yes, it's a kidnapping case. Prosecutors say there is much more to this case that will be revealed at a later date. But the charge That's a big old deal. What if that's your cellmate, man? It's a big old deal. <laughs> deal boy. Good God. Later date, but the charges are for a reason. Well, we're not going to try the case out here in public, but you can rest assured that in Ridgeland, we would not have arrested them and charged them with kidnapping if it wasn't kidnapping. Yeah, that's a big man. Well, said at $100,000 for each man. Uh, they have waived their preliminary hearing, which means now their case will go before a Madison County grand jury. Investigators say this case is ongoing. Now, I want to ask you a question, man. What country, like, what country does this guy make, what, the defensive lineman in the NFL? What country does he make 5 to $10 million a year doing anything? Just name What's one. Name? Well, Canada? he slimmed down and could run. And, no, and could him run as he, might he make is. make soccer. Canada, him as he is him, not somebody no else. Country. Him, him, not America somebody else. for five hundred, yeah. Alex. I'm gonna say he can go to Canada and play football in Canada. So they, they're not getting money much. like that, bro. Not even close. Uh, I don't know nothing about sports. I'm gonna say yeah, just here, man. What country could he go to? One of the finest universities in the um, one of the finest universities in the world. This guy. Get a scholarship, a full scholarship. Not he didn't pay a dime to go to one of the finest universities in the world. America, just America. Right here in the goddamn US of A. Why he just? Why he didn't just right. sue the man? Why he had kidnapped him? Learning a fucking thing. <laughs> why he could? Why he didn't just take the man to court and because sue him? That's not that's a sorry, son man I'm way I'm of cool. handling business. Yeah, but it would have kept. It would have kept him out of jail. Right, now, but, now you know, he's gonna lose his freedoms. Yeah, he needed a wife friend. like you. He needed a wife like Brown Sugar to make him think of that. Nah, he would kill yeah. me. Yeah, he wouldn't what? have had any money to invest in he'd the first place. He'd kill me on a honeymoon night. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Oh my god! But um, listen, man. Yeah, this is 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 why didn't he do? Because it's, it's that's just not how he operates. Um. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not his modus operandi, man. Uh -huh. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, we got, we got. We're gonna go to Memphis in a minute, man. Well, it's all a part of the National Martin Luther King National Holiday Weekend. Before Mike Epps took to the stage for laughs, he took part in a water distribution, joining local Greek organizations. These people are. They ready to laugh. Right here, Flair. Right here. <laughs> Before entertaining a crowd in a weekend comedy show downtown, comedian Mike Epps handing out water to Jackson residents, still struggling to get easy access to this basic resource. The water kind of got like a little older and stuff too when it come out. Oh, no laughing matter. And the rest of the country don't understand how bad it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do, Mike. It's called Jaffa. That it is. Epps joined members of local fraternities and sororities who gathered at the Jackson Convention Complex Sunday for a bottled water giveaway. It's all part of a day of service honoring the Dr. Martin Luther King national holiday. To come here, man, and to see how resilient these people are here in Jackson. Jackson's always been a great city in America, man. It's he always been a great city in America. It's the, it's the blackest, big, it's the biggest blackest city because the other cities that are this population of black people are um, Miami Gardens, East St. Louis, and I think Detroit. So this is probably the second biggest black city in the in in the country. And just and look at the the similar problems they have with like Flint. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, they're like literally doing USO service missions within the continental United States. But, but it's a white city at the same issue. 